Eminences, bíboros urak. His eminences, uh, bar bishops, bishops. Kedves pap testvérek. Dear priest brothers, religious brothers, sisters. Kedves jelenlévők. Dear uh, audience. Köszönöm azt a megtisztelő hívást. Uh, the, the honor to, to be invited as a non-Roman uh, Catholic uh, uh, minister can speak at this uh, symposium. As my blessed father uh, said, the, who was uh, one of the defining uh, figure of the Hungarian ecumenism, we are, bo- we are also Catholics, but uh, Wittenberg uh, Catholics. Egy lehetetlen uh, I was, uh, I've been asked uh, to uh, take an impossible, uh, undertaking an impossible mission uh, to briefly align the position of the member churches of the uh, of our organization uh, concerning the Lord's Supper. Uh, uh, though I consider the undertaking impossible, I undertake it, undertook it. I couldn't uh, help it, for it is a so great a treasure that needs to be spoken about, even if no one can ever understand it. This is a magnum mysterium. Explaining and supporting it with logical argument is impossible. It is a mystery that we experience again and again in our encounter with Christ. That a treasure that is not an addition to life, but life itself. As the Apostle Paul says, for me, life is Christ. The impossibility of this undertaking lies in the fact that the Economical Council of the churches in Hungary has 11 churches and works in fraternal cooperation with 20 other churches and church-related organizations. Uh, If we take only the denomination with full membership, we can speak of 11 different communion teachings, 11 different Eucharistic practices. A precise description of each of these, a professional theological presentation and a comparative analysis of each of them is well beyond the scope of this presentation. I will therefore try to focus on the spotlight, focus the spotlight on spotlight on the fundamental features and draw to to draw general ecumenical lessons. Looking at this rich community, this co- colorful community, one of the uh, one of the basic concepts of the economic movement comes to my to mind: <coughs> unity in diversity. Uh, this diversity, theologically speaking, leads Christian brothers and sisters to both repentance and thanksgiving. Repentance, because at the root of the fragmentation of schism that have been going on from the beginning. Uh, think of the uh, partisanship of the Corinthian church, the great sheeps, schism, uh, and a uh, lot of conflicts. At the same time, even if it's hard to speak about it, it uh, these, uh, uh, makes us for thanksgiving because uh, the Lord of the church, like the story of uh, Joseph, Joseph in the Old Testament, was able to bring blessings out of course, courses. Um, and today we are again again discovering the rich colors of the church, learning from each other and being strengthened by, by each other's faith. The uh, 16th century Reformed doctrine, man before God, Coram Deo, simul justus et peccator, that is to say both thinner and righteous, is true of uh, the church struggling on earth. He bears his uh, alienation from God, his distance, his broken divinity, as much as a sign of a justifying divine love. And so he can stand before his creator as a lost by redeemed and welcomed home again, a prodigal son asking for grace and experience, seeing uh, that all is grace. Simul justus et peccator. And this is true of the church, God's new chosen people and its members. The unity movement of the church, uh, both Protestant and Orthodox, as well as Roman Catholic, 
have made great achievements in the century of economic ecumenism, uh, the 20th century, but the possibility and realization of common Eucharistic celebration is not among these great steps. Although, although there are different opinions uh, as to whether the purpose of the ecumenism or the sign of the unity is the Eucharistic communion, the intercommunion, experience has shown that it is incomprehensible, even scandalous to the world, that um, the disciples of Jesus cannot sit down together at their master's table, and even when they do sit down, they do so in separate groups, far apart. One of the objects of uh, Jesus' prayers as high priest is that Heavenly Father would grant that, the, uh, that his people would be one so that the world would believe that Jesus was sent by his Father. For those who are conscious of the way of the denomination, this present situation is both burning and painful, and the constant and this is the constant constant object of uh, their f- prayer. The constant effort of uh, their actions is that uh, the, the people of Christ may celebrate the Eucharist together, already here in the earthly uh, reality, either as a goal to be achieved or as a result to be lived as a sign of the ecumenism that is being realized. Will the dividing wall between the different Christian denominations be broken down and will they be able to receive together the great gift of God in Christ to experience with their Lord the intimate encounter with the in the Eucharist? Will it remain an object of eschatological hope, eschatological hope? And will the marriage of the Lamb be the moment when the disciples like a Holy Spirit Thursday, the Last Supper, will be able to sit together at the table of their Lord. Um, the member churches of the Ecumenical uh, uh, Council of uh, Churches in Hungary can be divided into three groups. Even if it's, uh, this is a crude grouping, uh, this crude grouping risk ignoring the differences in detail. Eastern churches, historic Protestant churches, and neo-Protestant churches. The Roman Catholic Church participates in the life of our organization as an observer. Let's uh, have a look at the, um, the, the member churches. The, as for the Eastern churches, uh, the Economic Council includes five member churches from the Eastern Christian communities in Hungary, Serbian Orthodox Diocese of Buda, Constantinople Universal uh, Patriarchate, uh, Hungarian Orthodox Exarchate, uh, uh, Bulgarian Orthodox Church of Hungary, Romanian Orthodox Diocese of Hungary, Hungarian Diocese of the Russian Orthodox Church, Moscow uh, Patriarchate. Different languages, different cultural heritage, different ecclesiastical structures, and national and local traditions permeating universal liturgical practice. The most commonly served sacrament in Orthodoxy is the uh, is the Eucharist. This uh, sacrament is the center of the sacred liturgy. It is also called, uh, so in the liturgy text, a sacrament for the saints. All members of the church who partake uh, of the Eucharist share in body and blood of uh, Jesus Christ. The name of the sacrament is also revealing secret or mystery supper. The Orthodox Church has never developed a dogmatic teaching on the Eucharist, for it is a mysterious reality that cannot be expressed in words. As Ioannis Zizioulos writes, it would have been impossible for the Fathers to isolate objective phi and elevate the Eucharist to a separate subject. For the mystery of the Eucharist was considered to be an expression of the mystery of the salvation in all its richness, not a separate chapter of dogmatics. In the Orthodox uh, understanding, in the Eucharist, the elements become fully the body of the risen Christ, just as Christ was and is the the God-man, and so the Eucharist bread and wine are transformed into the Christ of the God-man. And uh, just as in Christ God, 
and man cannot be separated, God and man cannot be separated, so the bread and wine of the Eucharist cannot be divided into substance or, uh, and their attributes, for by the Holy Spirit both become the body of Christ as a whole. In the Orthodox uh, Holy Liturgy, after the proper preparation, the formed bread and the grape wine are transferred to the altar table, where after the words of Jesus, the, during the Eucharistic prayer, the bread and bread and wine are transformed. During the final part of the liturgy, the faithful offer communion under two colors, two species. The Eucharistic offerings remaining after the communion are consumed by one of the serving clergy after the dismissal of the faithful. First communion is possible after baptism, since the sacrament of confirmation is also administered at baptism. Let's go on, Evangelical Church. The, uh, the communion has played and uh, continues to play a prominent role in the Evangelical Church. The Evangelical Christians in the Reformation sought to restore the two focus worship that was the practice of the early church. Verbum et sacramentum, the word and the sacrament as the two centers of liturgy bearing uh, the real presence of Christ. It is uh, he who speaks, since it is not only Christ who is proclaimed, but the incarnate word himself who is incarnated in the sermon. He gives himself, for he, it is he who invites us to the altar of the communion, he who welcomes us, but, is also, but it is also he who gives himself as a food to the, those who sit at the table. One of the evangelical uh, creedal documents, the so-called uh, document of unity, Book of Concord, first we believe, teach, and uh, profess that in the Holy, in this Holy Supper, the body and blood of Christ are present in reality and in substance, and that it this is truly distributed with the bread and wine, and that this is truly what we partake of. Secondly, we believe, teach, and profess that uh, Christ's words of consecration are not to be understood otherwise uh, than as they are literally spoken. That is, that the, uh, the bread is not uh, the absent body of Christ, the wine is not the absent, blo absent blood of Christ, but that the bread and wine are in uh, reality the body and uh, blood of Christ by virtue of the sacramental union. Thirdly, now, as, the consecra as, uh, as for the consecration, we believe, teach, and profess that the, um, the presence of the body and blood of Christ in the Holy Supper is not brought about by the act of any man or by the word of the minister, but must be attributed to the omnipotent power of our Lord Jesus Christ alone. In the great catechism, uh, Luther writes, this sacrament is bread and wine, but not simply bread and wine as they are usually put on the table, but bread and wine contained in and bound to the word of God. The word distinguishes this sacrament and makes it not simply bread and wine, but the body and blood of Christ in truth and in name accedat verbum et elementum et fit sacramentum. This saying, as St. Augustine is so correct and apt uh, that uh, he could hardly have said uh, it better, says Luther. The verb uh, must take the element of sacrament, otherwise it remains only an element. The word of Christ says, take, e take eat of this my body, drink it all of you. This is a new testament in my blood. Then indeed it is the body and blood of Christ, according, according to the word of God, for what the mouth of Christ says is so. He does not lie or deceive. Whether you are unworthy or worthy, this is his body and blood for the power of the words which are associated with the bread and wine. End of quotation. It is in order to conform to the ordinance of Christ that the Lutheran uh, Church practices the communion under two species. Communion, they teach, is something that faith can grasp and receive. And on the subject of preparing for and receiving communion, Luther's small catechism teaches the evangelic evangelicals fasting and bodily preparation are beautiful outward order, but they are truly worthy and well prepared only 
by those who believe this word. It is given for you and for the remission of the sins that have been poured out. But he who doesn't believe these words or doubts them is unworthy and unprepared. For this verb, for your sakes, demands nothing but faith. In connection with the evangelical preparation, it is often said that the Lord's Supper uses the three prepositions of Christ's presence. How is Christ present in come sub? The real meaning of this is that in taking communion, we partake of Christ's redemption, not only by accepting what we hear, but also by taking the host, the bread and the wine, which Christ says are his body and blood given for us. In other words, we receive the gift, gift of Christ not only with our ears and our minds, but also with our mouths, not only spiritually, but also bodily through the word. In congregational practice, the evangelical communion is preceded by a communal uh, confession in which an absolution is pronounced according to Christ's order after five questions. Uh, have been answered. The Evangelical Church of Hungary announced the year of uh, Holy Communion in 2020, which has been uh, postponed until, uh, extended until the 31st of October 2021 due to the epi epidemic uh, pandemic situation. The uh, Evangelical Synod has also brought forward the possibility for, uh, of the First Communion, which was previously linked to confirmation to children under 12 years of age, subject to appropriate accompaniment and preparation. Several significant stages in the decades-long dialogue between Lutherans and Catholics at the highest level are marked by joint documents, among which the Eucharist das Abendhal, uh, jointly published by the Vatican Lutheran Third Federation Joint Commission, stand, uh, stands out. Equally outstanding is the ongoing theme of the dialogue on the priestly ministry and dialogue on uh, the priestly ministry and uh, its a papi szolgálatról és and its joint document common jo uh, document ministry das Amt. since the decisive uh, difference in catholic and lutheran thought and practice is not to be found in the doctrine of the lord's supper but in the different use on the priestly ministry Reformatus. Reform Church. The Heidelberg Catechism, as one of the fundamental confessional documents of the Reformed Church, says, Christ commanded me and all believers to eat of the broken bread and drink of the cup that was offered to me in remembrance of him. With this, he promised that the sacrifice and breaking of his body and the shedding of his blood on the cross would be done for me just as I see with my own two eyes when the bread of the Lord is broken for me and the cup is handed to me. And he promised that his crucified body and shed blood will feed my soul to eternal life as surely as I eat of the bread and drink of the cup which uh, the servant of the Lord hands me a sign of uh, the of Christ's body and blood, end of quotation. Józef Zsengeli, a theologist, a professor says, according to our Reformed faith, bread and wine are sacred symbols, signs, <clears throat> which are meant to ex be experienced in some physical reality of spiritual identification during the remembrance. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, I quote him, we share in this body and blood uh, as truly as it is true to consume <clears throat> these holy tokens in remembrance of his death. The teaching of the Reformed Church is uh, usually seen by outside observers as a symbolic interpretation of the Lord's Supper. Bishop Károly Fekete explains that it is indeed a sign, a symbol, in the sense that, I quote, the sequence of events uh, that takes place 
symbolizes and represents the action of God. According to our, our Reformate confessional heritage, <clears throat> the sign is in relationship and of likeness and unity with the thing signified. End of quotation. In every case, uh, the reception of the Reformed Eucharist takes place in a worship uh, service where the Word of God is read in preparation for the preparation of the sacrament and the Apostle Creed is sung by the congregation to express the faithful reception of the uh, sacrament. The community then responds uh, to the pastor's uh, questions. Megbocsátásból fakadó háladó, engedelmes életre vonatkozóan felel a közösség a leg. The so the community then responds to the pastor's question. I believe and confess and promise. And then uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, public uh, proclamation and divine forgiveness of the blessing is made, and each person comes to the Lord's uh, table to receive first the bread and then the wine. According to the Reformed teaching, the marks of the communion are not changed into the body and blood of Jesus. However, they confess that the Lord's Supper, uh, the living glorified Christ, is really present and commune and communes with man in all his fullness. But uh, this real presence, as in the preaching of the word, is through the Holy Spirit. This uh, Reformed doctrine following Calvin is called realis presentia. It is the real presence of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit that creates a mysterious union with him, which is uh, called in Unio Mystica Cum Christo. And the, uh, the answer to the uh, question 79 of the Heidelberg Catechism, just quoted, continues, we are made partakers of his real body and blood of by the work of the Holy Spirit, as certainly as we receive the holy signs in our bodily mouth in remembrance of him. Baptist Church, uh, and this is a minority church in Hungary, but on uh, international grounds, it's an uh, important uh, uh, community. Uh, in the confession of the faith of the Hungarian Baptist Church, uh, there is a reference to the verbs of the administration of the sacrament, verba testamenti, and the confession of faith clearly speaks of commemorative signs in, connex in connection with the Lord's Supper. The bread and wine are symbols which the believer receives by faith. We read, those who are born again, who have baptized confession uh, of their faith and who live in orderly fellowship uh, with God and their fellow human beings may receive the bread and wine which commemorate the death of the Lord. Jesus Christ, the signs of the communion, uh, the bread and wine, are symbols of Christ's broken body and shed uh, blood. If we receive them in faith, in remembrance of the Savior, Savior, we are united in spirit with our Lord through the Holy Spirit, because the, in the outward act we are renewed in the certainty, Emmanuel, Emmanuel God is with us. In the Lord's Supper, our communion with Christ is simultaneously revealed and renewed in our communion with our brothers and sisters. Lemente Örik, a Baptist theologist, emphasizes the Eucharistic uh, 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 thankful the, uh, the, the objective basis of the communion, namely the redemption, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the filling of the Holy Spirit must be coupled with the hearing and faithful acceptance of the word as subjective basis for the communion to fulfill its purpose in the life of the congregation and the believer. It is clear from, that, from what was, has been said uh, that the tokens of the Lord Jesus' death, uh, the bread and wine which he take uh, to be the symbols of Christ's broken body and shed blood can be received only by those who have been born again and baptized by confession of faith and who has redeemed man live in order to communion with the Lord and their fellow men. Uh, this part uh, of this statement means in practice that the children, <coughs> visitors, uh, interested person belong to, belonging to the congregation may be present at the communion services, but they may not partake the sacrament of communion. And the second part of the sentence implies that the days before communion should be used by believers to engage in personal silent introspection 
repeating of their sins in the light of the Word and the Holy Spirit and, and praying uh, for God's forgiving grace. Methodista. Uh, Methodist Church, uh, founded by the Wesley Brothers and in many ways close to the Evangelical Church, C communion is an important part of uh, the life of the Methodist denomination where the power of God is made available. The foundations of the Methodist Church doctrine are set out in a statement of faith in the denom uh, on the denomination's website. Uh, and start of quotation, we uh, see ourselves as part of the universal church of Christ in which we are made like Christ through prayer, reaching and service. It is into his communion, into this communi community of faith that we are received in and incorporated by Christ through baptism and admission into the membership of the church, accepting the promise of the Holy Spirit to renew and transform us. Through the regular celebration of the Holy Communion, Union, we share in the presence of the risen uh, Jesus Christ and are thus strengthened to be his faithful disciples. The articles of the faith of the Methodist Church, 25 articles of faith they have, deal especially with the sacraments, which in this community also means baptism and communion. The article 18 says that communion is not only a sign of mutual brotherly love between Christians but rather a sacrament of our redemption through the death of Christ. Therefore, for those who take it regularly with dignity and faith, the bread we break is communion with the body of Christ, and the cup we bless is communion with the blood of Christ. The doctrine of transubstantiation is not accepted by Methodists as it is by the Protestant churches. He argues that it uh, cannot be uh, provided from scripture, even contrary. It is contrary to the clear words. Uh, it the quotation continues. The body of Christ is in the, in the Lord's Supper is given to us in a heavenly and spiritual way. And, the only, and only in this way we receive and eat it. And the means by which we take and eat the body of Christ in the Lord's Supper is faith. According to the teaching of the Methodist Church, it is contrary to, uh, to the uh, contrary to Christ's ordinance to keep uh, uh, carry around, lift up, and worship the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Laszlo Kalet, superintendent of the Methodist Church in Hungary, says mysticism and realism, mystery and reality. As a Methodist, this is what I experience as, uh, in the sacrament of uh, Holy Communion. Christ calls us to his table. We can have a spiritual community and experience of living, com living communion with Jesus. The Lamb of the Calvary was a sacrifice for us. Communion is the experience of forgiveness and renewal in Him. It is an instrument of God's grace that we can live regularly. Not a merit, but a gift. John Wesley, an Anglican minister who led the Methodist re revival movement, taught in the light of this, take communion as often as you can. Let us accept this gift let us uh, discover this ministry and reality of communion and of quotation. <coughs> and, uh, and last uh, church is a Pentecostal church. Pentecostals in the tradition of the Reformation recognize two sacraments on, the biblical, on a biblical basis, baptism and communion. <coughs> communion, uh, uh, quotation, communion is one of the most extreme expressions of our communion, uh, our unity with Jesus Christ and with our brothers and sisters. Communion was instituted by the Lord Jesus Christ at the Last Supper with the purpose of commemorating his suffering and death until he returns, <coughs> until he comes back. Communion is also a confirmation and renewal of the new covenant on our part uniting us to our Savior and to each other who share in the one bread. It's worth noting that the first Pentecostal code in Hungary also concludes food wash washing, referring to the example of Jesus. <coughs> Quotation, the Lord has abolished the ceremonies, but he has left us the commandment of love, love and hum humility the taking of the Lord's Supper preceded by food washing because these were ordered and done by the Lord Jesus himself. 
In their confession of faith, they declare that Jesus took the Lord's Supper on the eve of his uh, uh, anointing de atoning death and Jewish Passover with the intention that they should do the same in, the, in his memory. From time to time, they remember this his death with gratitude until he returns. The signs of the Lord's Supper, <coughs> the unleavened bread and wine are the symbols of Christ's broken body and shed blood. In it is revealed uh, our communion with Christ and our brothers and sisters. The communion is offered to those who have been born again and baptized in confession of faith but who have judged themselves in sincere repentance and have accepted by faith the sin-removing blood of Jesus, end of quotation. <clears throat> and the last uh, idea, ecumenical council, ecumenical facts, desires, needs, and hopes. The ecumenical movement is not about dissolving into formal structure on pseudo-unity, but rather about discipleship. And if we are disciples, then it is our task and duty to listen to the master and learn from, the, from an, another's teaching, to put aside the familiar uh, schemes, to judge the other according to such schemes, and to wonder that even doctrinal differences bring God-blessed richness and practical differences point to the inexhaustibly deep mystery of the Eucharist. Once again, the normative function of theology is completed by the function of reformulation. The actual formulation, uh, the uh, reformulation of the eternal truth is the duty of every age. This is also our ecumenical duty in relation to the Eucharistic Eucharist. Particularly exciting in this area is the presentation of the meaning of the expression presencia realis, where the question of the priority of the philosophical and biblical arguments may be decisive. Obviously, uh, I quote Andras Royce, uh, professor, it's quite obvious that the clear teaching of the gospel cannot be subject to negotiation or compromise. But we mustn't forget that we have in common we, that what we already binds, what already binds uh, us together and not the Christian mandate for unity. The church, the church is the body of Christ. <coughs> and all, all who are members of the body of Christ want to live in body nearness and body communion. The present Christ promises that he who comes to him will in no way reject him. The Eucharist Congress also has its objective, the drawing near to Christ, the strengthening of faith in Christ, life in Christ. Our common ecumenical desire is to draw ever closer to the present Christ. And, we, and if we draw closer to him, we will inevitably draw closer to uh, one another and perhaps bring together those groups who today separated from one another are trying to draw ever closer to Christ and to sit down at his table. It is infinitely, infinitely painful to us and very incomprehensible to those on the outside that this hasn't been possible so far. It is the hope of many that they may already taste the marriage uh, of the Lamb uh, together here on earth for which we are preparing for eternity. Lajos Dolhai, in his introduction to the, the basic document of the Eucharistic Congress, says, we could also say that the economical movement aims to celebrate the Eucharist together one day. We know very well the importance of those models of unity, the eternal exclamation point for the word with the birth of the, <coughs> the liturgy of Lima, for example, its theor theoretical significance call attention precisely to the possibility of experiencing communion despite doc doctrinal differences. <coughs> An example is the Lionberg Concordia, which united the CPA churches, which there are very different doctrines on communion into communion, a pulpit, and altar, on the basis of the principle, as the Apostle John puts it, 
that God is greater than our hearts, it is also known for its approach, which, instead of them, presencia realis, uh, uses and expands to the idea of participation in the ecclesiological body of Christ to establish a common Eucharistic practice. The active part of the Eucharistical movement is not only savoring as bridging solution to the whole community, but is even constantly enriching uh, the term which has become a terminus technicus in the world of dialogues. This is the Eucharistic hospitality. Collaboration between several Catholic and Evangelical Ecumenical Research Centers has resulted in the publication of the paper Communion in the Eucharist is possible. These on Eucharistic host hospitality. This, the research institute explained that the desire and purpose of their thesis is to document and establish that the Eucharistic hospitality expressed in the sense of an open invitation to communion is possible despite all the remaining theological and practical differ differences. Then they list the exceptions and special occasions where this has become natural for many. The document refers to the task of common witnesses to the word, the source of the common practice of mercy, the impatience of ecumenically active and committed faithful, and the need and possibility of controlling practices that are experimental. This way of thinking belongs more to the category of preparation and wayfinding for the future than to the category of a model to be followed, since, since it is not yet ecclesiastically acceptable to cross existing boundaries. However, the practice of the economical model of reconciled differences proposes, also for ecclesiological and pedagogical reason, a passive contemplative co-prayerful participation in each other's Eucharistic occasions. The availability of clean drinking water is one of the biggest issues of uh, facing humanity. Water is life. Without it, everything perishes. Samarian woman, the Samarian woman, woman asks Jesus, who promises her the water of life, to give her the water that will never make her thirsty. The people who are drawing near to Christ, the particular churches, all long for clean water. Water that means life, even eternal life, and with it a clean spring. This desire and leg legitimate uh, need must be understood in fraternal communion, listening to each other, and the disciples of Christ must do their utmost to remove the walls and distances that separate them. In the meantime, let the that lack of intercommunion pain us every time. We cannot share the sacrament together, and let this pain motivate us to work for full communion in body, soul, and spirit. Imre Giretz is a recently published book on Eucharistic spirituality presents this greatest gift of, Lord, of our Lord as a manifestation of the active presence. May the active presence of Christ in the Eucharist communion move the leaders and people of the church to active presence in the work for unity. All my springs are in you, is the motto, this is the motto of the uh, International Eucharistic Congress, taken from the Psalms. Uh, uh, the uh, Christ is a source, teaching his life, his redemptive crucifixion and resurrection, his grace which works amongst us until the end of time is able to bring spiritual renewal to our cities, or our people, Europe, and the whole world. End of quotation. Let us add uh, for the uh, interdenominational church, for world Christianity as a whole, for the Eucharist in the sign of communion in Christ and with one another, the sacrament of unity. It is not only the sacrament of the missing unity, but the sacrament that creates and can create and can create unity, the unity of the one body of Christ. And while we are thinking about it, let us not forget this is why Christ prays to his Father as the High Priest. Thank you for your attention.